everybody, and welcome to the first ever weekend review of Level Headed Games. My name is Wiley. I'm Kelly. And I'm Tyler. And this is a show where we're going to talk to you about the games we've been playing on Twitch, uh, maybe not on Twitch, uh, and what we're looking forward to playing in the following week, as well as some other pop culture related materials and something that might be completely random related to gaming or not. Uh, so. This week on Twitch, uh, Kelly, you recently started playing Life is Strange. Yeah, um, I got through episode one last week, and then last night I just got through episode two. Uh, so yeah, it's, I think, going pretty well. So I went, I've already played through the game, and uh, at first I was a little unsure playing it through episode one. I was like, this is a little bit cheesy, I can see the potential yeah. here. Mm -hmm. uh, after the playing writing. episode two, yeah, the writing, at times it's great, <laughs> at times you're, yeah. it's a little eye, eye worthy. <coughs> um... But once you get to the end of episode two, the stakes really kind of go up a yeah, notch. And a uh, just wait until episode three and four. Yeah, you told me that I wouldn't be able to stop playing after episode two. And I'm like, yeah, it's it's pretty tough. But now that I, like, three and four, it's four episodes or is it five? It's five. It's five and episodes. Fi four, I, like five is great too. But three and four story-wise are just really something special. Um, okay. So, so who's your favorite character so far? Definitely Chloe. Like if you've watched, if you watch my twitches, my twitches. Yeah. <laughs> my streams. Yeah. My streams. Um, obviously, I'm like new to all of this, so um, yeah, I had my first one last week. That was like my first one ever, and so. Um, but I was talking about Chloe, and how I like can't find a way to hate her. Like she's so like dramatic, and like obviously like the teenage angst is strong with this one. Definitely. But the thing is like I feel like every time like I can justify you, I can justify you. You've gone through so much shit. Like I can justify you, and then. Yeah, and. Uh, so she's still my favorite. You'll learn more about her past, mm -hmm. and there's some really cool yeah. segments coming up. We won't spoil them. We're gonna have a full, spoiler-filled discussion here on Life so, is Strange coming up. I mean, I have a question I want to ask though because I've like watched playthroughs of the whole game. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. So like, don't have, spoil anything. I'm not. So, okay. but ha having played through the first two episodes, like. Yeah. How do you feel about like Max and Chloe's relationship? Like. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. I think that there's like a lot of um. Tension, but at the same time, there really isn't because there's they've been friends, and like that's they have like a very very strong friendship that obviously like you'll see when you play the game like Max is extremely like, I guess open with with Chloe in ways that like if you were just like long distance friends you wouldn't mm -hmm. be or if you were just like semi friends so I feel like they have some like residual tension between each other that they need to work through but at the same time I still feel like they're really strong. Mm -hmm. But as a Considering the fact that there's so few games created about teenage girls or young women, yeah. I mean, does that speak to you in any way? Like, does it I'm, seem? Cause, I'm, I'm the gender of female. Right. So. Um. Just curious what you thought about that. Well, yeah, because I mean, most like we're we're going through like um the dormitories and it's just like a girls' dormitory mm -hmm. and it's just like girl, 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 and it's it's weird because like so many video games aren't like that. So that's a really good point that I hadn't even thought of. Um. In ways, yes, just because, like, I'm trying to justify everything the characters do from, like, when I was a teenager and how I am now. And at the same time, it's, like, <clears throat> cheesy in times. Mm -hmm. And so it's almost like, are they making fun of the teenage girl? And that makes me angry. Cause I it's don't like, think so. I get that vibe sometimes. That might be because I'm, like, an oversensitive female. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <maybe. laughs> Happens a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> so, we'll get back to Life is Strange in upcoming videos. Uh, other games we played this week, uh, Tyler, uh, another adventure game. We'll, we don't specify or specialize in adventure games, but it just sort of kind of played out that way this week. But uh, Tales from the Borderlands. Yeah, uh, I started Tales of the Borderlands. That was the first time I ever played it. Um, I played through some like the other Telltale games. Mm -hmm. um, Tales of the Borderlands was the one game that I have never even watched anybody play it. I've never really looked into playing it. Um, mm -hmm. You recommended it to me, so I just started streaming it the other day. It's easily the funniest of the Telltale games. Really? So far, just I have, Yeah, I haven't seen anything with it either, and I'm a yeah. Telltale, oh, Telltale fan. Just playing through episode <laughs> one, I mean, there's tons of just like witty jokes and yeah. um, just things that you wouldn't expect. I mean, it's definitely, it's, de it's the Borderlands. I mean, there's tons of, all the bots are like, extremely funny and everything like that. So mm -hmm. it's like bor like Borderlands, like... It's just the world of Borderlands yeah. and has the character Handsome Jack. Okay. Uh, you don't play as Handsome Jack, but he's a, especially as the series goes on, he's a very heavily featured character. And, That's um, interesting. Was it... It's just, the Borderlands series has always had this kind of 
really good humor, um, but it really gets a chance to shine in a game that's, you know, 90% watching people talk and yeah. doing dialogue options. And, and I don't know if right. you guys want me to talk about Klaus at all that I started playing. Yeah, sure. Klaus is uh, it's a recently released uh, PSN title. It may be on PC. Do you know if it's on PC as well? Uh, I don't think so. I yeah, well, I, haven't, I haven't looked. Yeah, it, it's an indie game. It just was released on uh, Tuesday. And what are your impressions? Um, yeah, now, actually, now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure it's just a PS4 exclusive, exclusive game mm -hmm. because you yeah, actually yeah. have to use the touchpad for in the game. Right. Um, yeah, probably. And it's really interesting because the entire game is pretty much a dialogue between Klaus, who wakes up in the basement of a building with nothing but his name written on his arm and the only dialogue is in the game is between him which it just shows up as text on the screen and he's pretty much talking to you the player and at one point he starts calling you the player mm -hmm. so um, breaking the fourth wall though. so that's not just in the tutorial <laughs> yeah. because i've seen some videos of the game and i assume like this must be level one it's doing all these fun this is just a really clever tutorial it's a consistent thing throughout the game because yeah. yeah. doesn't deadpool do something like that like an old deadpool game did that he just like yeah, all, all the intro game. all the tutorial yeah. was just him like breaking the fourth wall yeah that's all De deadpool does <laughs> yeah i guess that makes um, sense. yeah yeah klaus is super interesting i've only played through i've only played it for about an hour um, and you have a couple youtube videos up on that already yeah or so uh, i uploaded like a couple episodes which was about like 40 minutes worth of gameplay cool well um i wonder if you know when a game like that comes out i'm kind of on the fence about whether or not i should buy it because it just seems like this is going to be free on ps plus in a couple months <laughs> but yeah anyway you, it's not good to operate like that it's good to support independent developers and everything so anyway I, i'm looking forward to playing it um one thing i just want to mention that I've been playing this week is yeah. Vice City. Uh, yeah, I, I had no idea what you were playing this week, to be honest. Oh, uh, well, I played Metro. I streamed Metro Last Light uh, on Monday with Tyler, and that was... awesome. You yeah. think it's I, awesome? I like it a lot. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. I like the world that... Uh, it's based on a novel, so I think it's uh, got that going for it. This, it's clear that a lot of thought went into the universe of this post-apocalyptic uh, Moscow where you're living... <clears throat> under, in the subway tunnels, pretty much, with, uh, I think they say something around 40,000 people remain on Earth. Uh, it's very dark, but there's actually some humor in the game, and just kind of exploring the little settlement areas, it's got a lot of personality. Uh, the yeah, gameplay definitely. leaves a little bit to be desired, especially the shooting aspects, I think, yeah. are pretty antiquated when you compare them to a lot of modern shooters. But it's got Man. some stealth aspects that I think they're I think done that's really well. cool. I, but yeah, like you said, I really love the environment and everything. I love the whole storyline kind of behind it. Mm -hmm. Well, I agree. I think it's uh, yeah. worth playing for sure. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's not a 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10. But if you're looking for a single-player experience that will entertain you for 8 hours, 10 hours, then definitely worth checking out. Uh, and I picked it up for nine dollars, and I got two games for nine dollars. You can't really beat that. Complain. But anyway, yeah, three ducks. I've been playing GTA Vice City, and it's just bringing back so many memories of uh, a game that I used to have to sneak uh, and play. I don't. I was trying to remember how that I bought it um, earlier, and I don't really know because you know Grand Theft Auto was the Mortal Kombat of the '90s in terms of controversy. Um, <laughs> yeah. And this is just been my favorite in the series ever since I was 13, 14 years old when I was first playing it, and it still really holds up. I mean, the the gameplay, even back then, was a little bit wonky at times, it was a little bit frustrating, but the driving feels great, the writing and uh, acting's really funny, it's got this, just a crazy list of uh, famous voice actors, um, and the music is the standout is just top-notch uh, if you haven't played Vice City I know you probably have it sold like millions and millions of copies but if you're maybe a little too young to have experienced the PS2 ones <laughs> they just really re-released them on PS4 it's totally worth picking them up and I think Vice City's uh, maybe the best place to start it's also the first chronologically this is so way to shine! fuck okay and now's uh, the part of the show where we talk about our favorite non-gaming content of the week. Um, 
So I'm a big podcast fan, and there's one that's, I think, you know, number one on all the charts right now. Uh, so it's not exactly an original suggestion, but it's Serial, the NPR-produced podcast, uh, long-form journalism about one specific case. Um, this season, which is the second season, is about the POW Bo Bergdahl. And um, his experiences in Taliban captivity for nearly five years and about his rationale for leaving his uh, platoon in, uh, I guess, 2009 and uh, the charges that he's now facing. He's mm. recently, it was announced that he actually is uh, facing treason charges uh, as well as a charge called misbehaving in the presence of the enemy, uh, something like that. And he be, could be facing some serious jail time, potentially huh. life. Um, you said this is season two that this one's about? Or no, this, this is season one? This is season two of Serial. Season one is about something completely different. Oh, okay. Right. It's so, like the first of this. It's the first about Bo Bergdahl. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I think episode four just came out recently. That's the most recent one. It's just super engaging. Um, you can tell there's... So much time went into the music and the pacing and the editing. It just all comes together into something that um, I usually listen to them while I'm at the Y or something. doesn't exactly pump you up. But... <laughs> <laughs> I get to go, man. Yeah. Um, that's my number one podcast listening time besides the car. Um, so, yeah, check it out, uh, Serial. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can talk about it a little bit next week. Sure. Yeah. My non-video game topic, um, I read the book Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. Um, it was a book written back in 2011, I believe, um, but I just heard about it this year. Um, it's a book about um, a main character who lives on Earth, and but it's 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 a what like. Oh, it's just a, like a lot of a lot of books no. are based on like planet Earth. Okay, I know. It's Go just, on, Tyler. I'm, so, I'm, I'm engaged. The most vague description possible. I'm working. Try, on I'm it. trying to be spoiler free. <laughs> okay. Please um. Go on. Anyway. Um. So, our main character lives in a world where, um, <coughs> society is pretty much getting taken over by the internet. Everyone's basically living in the internet. Um, they were these whole immersion rigs. And Is it like that episode of Futurama? <laughs> Remember that? No. Like, oh, it's such no, a good really. episode where, like, they just put on helmets and it really does sound like that. Well, maybe, maybe it is. Anyway. Um, but they go into this world called the Oasis um, and they can, like, go to school in the Oasis. Mm -hmm. They can, like, have, they have their own avatar, which they design. They can have it look like themselves. They can have it look like something completely different. Um, people can like work inside the oasis and make real money and people can go on quests and sell stuff in the oasis for real money in the real world. So this um, could be a game. I mean, but like, can you also go to like, like, you know, like autotrader.com in the oasis? I'm sure you could. <laughs> so it's any website. Yeah, probably. Okay, gotcha. Um, but anyway, the main plot behind the story is... The creator of the Oasis, his name is Halliday, he ends up dying, um, and his dying, not his dying wish, but when he dies, instead of, like, a will, he leaves his entire fortune, meaning, like, all of his money and, like, the rights to the Oasis, um, he makes, like, a game out of it, and whoever can find an, an Easter egg oh, that he, cool. he hid um, in the game gets, like, the rights to his entire fortune, and so it's pretty much... Um, our main character, he is part of a group called Gunters, which is pretty much everybody who's looking for the egg, and he's not, like, part of a group, he's working by himself, but everybody looking for the egg is considered a Gunter, okay. and the way, they're pretty much trying to get to the egg before this huge, like, corporate group, because right now the Oasis is free to, for anybody who has, like, the rig to get into it. Um, but this corporate group wants to find the egg and then take over and charge like a monthly subscription right. to get the to evil. use it. Yeah. So 
that's basically the entire story in a nutshell. I mean, it's kind of a long description. No, but... that sounds really cool. I would definitely read that. That would be cool. Awesome. It's like, an awesome book. It'd be like a gameception sort of thing, but it could be kind of cool as a game. Yeah, or awesome. Movie. Yeah, it sounds cool. And uh, the fact that Will Wheaton reads it, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, and I've and got Tyler it on, Hadley, of course. I got it on audiobook. <laughs> so, oh, cool. So Will, re- Will Wheaton read it to me. <laughs> well, that's great. Nice. He's uh, got a very soothing voice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he does. All right. Um, I can never be a podcast person because, like, I I tried once when I was probably like, I don't know, like seventeen. I just sat outside, like had um, I think like The Wizard of Oz or on or something like something I had definitely like read before, and I was just like daydreaming, and I was just like, wait, you I mean just an audiobook. Is an audiobook the same thing as a podcast? No, no. There's people talking to you, and there's nothing to watch. <laughs> Sorry, I thought that was like the same thing. No. Okay, well, I mean, well, apparently, I need an education. All right, that's um, okay. So, so Kelly, it's your turn. My turn. Um, so my topic is about um, I like to go to expos. Um, kind of part of my job description, but no. Um, I went to this uh, con. Was it for work? No, it wasn't for work that I went this weekend. I went no. to. Um, I was. I've heard like three different ways to pronounce it, but I think it's Arisia. And it was in Boston, and it's like a really old sci-fi convention that has been going on since like the 70s. Cool. And um, so that was at um, the hotel, I forget what it is, right next to the Boston Convention Center, they're like attached. Um, so I went um, with a, gr- a group of friends, and went for one day, I went on Sunday, and it was still a good turnout. Um, it, I mean, I'm, if you really wanted to like sit down and talk about like sci-fi stuff there was stuff about books there was a few things about games it was also a lot of arts like their art show was probably my favorite part it was really cool um but other than that the expo floor was kind of small but still like worth checking out um did you dress up yeah i went as elizabeth from bioshock um yeah my favorite um (laughs) so it was pretty awesome because i got to cosplay which is one of my faves um, but I'm also... Who else do you cosplay as? Well, I'm going to PAX East okay. in April. Um, we just got our ticket stuff figured out, so we are all set to go, which is fantastic. Um, I'm going to be going Are as... tickets sold out? Tickets are completely sold out. Okay, that's Three day passes yeah. sold out in, like, less than ten minutes. It was... <sighs> it's crazy. Yeah, we should have gone. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? I really wanted to get... I want to get a GoPro and just, like, strap it on and, like... Go crazy. Apparently, right. Ken Levine was there last year. I probably walked right past him. Oh, had no wow. idea. Yeah, on a Twitch stream. That's sweet. Yeah, yeah. I was. I, w- I watched it like last year. Just get like a selfie stick and do a vlog. <laughs> just be like, that's Ken. <laughs> um, so I'm going to be going, I think, as. Um, I might go as Bastila from Star Wars um, The Old Republic. Oh. Knights of the Old Republic? Knights of the Old Republic, cool. sorry. Um, one day, I'm thinking about maybe doing Elizabeth again another day. I did her last year. I'm going to be going as Asami from The Legend of Korra. And I'm going to go as maybe Gamora from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Whoa. Yeah, I, I got yeah. the green paint. I, see how I did cosplay happens. once. And you did? I did. I went to uh, the Big Apple Anime Fest in, um, in New York City when I was That's like 12. Cool. That's cool. Yeah, I went because my friend Alex was uh, huge into anime, and he took me, and um, well, his parents took me, him, and a couple other yeah. friends, and we did this Trigun skit. <gasps> no, I, uh, I was just, I, could, like, I was just thinking like that. that. Yeah, <laughs> no, I wasn't Vash, I was uh, Wolfwood. That's cool. Um, so he's the one with the, the, the cross. The cross, yeah. oh, he's so, my favorite. It's been so long since I've seen I, that. Made, I know my oh, mom so made the cross nice. out of like uh, two bedposts. And How wrapped you in were white towels and yeah. Was that oh, heavy? Yeah, that's awesome. No, no, it wasn't heavy. It was like two like slats that you put under your bed. Yeah. Okay. No, but so That's cool. <laughs> that was a good time. <laughs> uh, I've never cosplayed. Yeah. My sister cosplayed. I don't even know if that counts. You zombified for like past the statute of li- limitations on that. Yeah. It's I don't know, it's wicked fun. And we went um last year we did um The Legend of Korra as well and we had like a bunch of people who were just kinda like like, they recognized us, and it was cool, because then we, like, stopped and had a conversation. Just, like, it's really nice, because it's, like, a geek community, and it's so geek-strong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and, like, people are just so friendly, they'll come up to talk to you, and, like... I, I would know. love to get more involved and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, you need to, uh... I, you know, I've... I haven't been to nearly as many conventions as you have, so it'd be cool to right. see some around the area, for sure. It's a bummer we couldn't make it to PAX East, but... I know. Yeah, it's just, I'll like, definitely. a whole 
huge community that whole community is just like full of awesome people yeah it really is um even like well pax was giving us some doubt because there was like a limit on how many tickets you can buy blah blah blah, blah. and so it was like per household you can only buy so many but we didn't exceed that but apparently anybody who bought in the same household and they were like basically saying like nope sorry we can't do anything being like complete dicks but apparently then today they called back and they were like no like we're gonna give you your tickets like it's the right thing to do blah 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 so they like righted their mistake, which makes me have more faith in Max. All right, so. cool. Good. Yeah, super excited. And now it's time for your seven-day level-headed games forecast, where we discuss what we're going to be playing in the upcoming week. Uh, I started with Metro Last Light on Monday. I'm going to continue with that walkthrough playthrough, uh, and I also streamed Shovel Knight. I like to get back into that. It's one of my favorite games of the past few years. Uh, besides that, I'm kind of on the lookout for a game I can really delve into and have some fun streaming. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if there's something else, but that's those are the two on the books right now. And what about you, Kelly? Um, so I'm going to keep going with Life is Strange. Um, enjoying that, so I'm hoping to keep going. And yeah, I'm thinking about maybe doing Bioshock Infinite 1999 mode, which would, I feel, be a, a test of my will. Ruin your soul. No, I, I've, I've done it before, and I can do it again. Yes, you I can. Just, I just need my Xbox with my controller, mm -hmm. and I'll be fine. make that happen. Yeah. And you, you wanted to play, since you haven't, you, um, this is one of the great things about us coming together to work on this, is that we get access to more games. You yeah. haven't played The Last of Us. Uh, That's right. I really, really want to play that. So that... Mm, that might. Yeah, be. and that's just. I've good. avoided all spoilers on that too, which I don't know yeah, how that's, that's even good possible. Then. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so yeah. I, I would really like to play that at some point too. All spoilers? You don't even know what happens after the first hour? Mm -mm. Oh, wow. Okay. Cool. Yeah, like. Sweet. Nothing. Tyler? That would be interesting then. Uh, yeah, so yeah. I started playing Tales of the Borderlands and Klaus. Um, I'm definitely going to continue playing those two games. Um, <laughs> Also, I want to continue playing Don't Starve Together with my sister whenever she gets another chance. I'd like to play that. Um, it's it's a really fun game. I enjoy that you game. You have it on Steam? Yeah, it's on right. Steam. I think I have um, it I think it's only like 10 bucks or something. Cool. Um, yeah, if you're if your Did you ever play Don't Starve? I'm sure my computer could play Don't Starve. <laughs> my I mean, computer could play Don't Starve. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I did play Don't Starve a little bit. Um, I just think Don't Start Together is like so much more fun when you're playing with people. Oh really? Because I haven't played t together, but I've uh, like I played the, the the one where you're by yourself in the woods. So. Yeah. So hopefully I get to play those again. All right. Um, it's been a really fun first week at Level Headed. Uh, thanks for anybody that's followed us on Twitch. Anybody that just came in and popped in for a minute, thank you as well. Uh, shout out to King Sloth. Um, we will uh, see you next week, and we hope you enjoy the uh, streaming. If you guys have any recommendations or anything for the future, make That's sure right. to Sorry. leave them in the comments below. Make yeah. sure to like, comment, and subscribe. All right. And we also will be working on our social media and our set schedule, so also be on the lookout. Right, right. So, <laughs> sorry for the long goodbye, but <laughs> we can't, Monday we can't is typically uh, going to be my day. Uh, Tuesday is Tyler's day. Wednesday is Kelly's day. And Thursday, we all get together and make this video and uh, maybe stream something too. All right. Until next time. Peace. Stay level. Stay level. Uh. <laughs>